Terry Lynn, Traveling Artista. What entices an artist to paint? When a loved one passes, and especially if it's your mother, your first teacher, your mentor, and your greatest critic, those passing times can elicit many emotional responses as we watch them age and pass into that time between here and there, as this first painting I did creates that ethereal feeling of the in-between. Another painting I wish to capture was this time at the end when she and her beloved cat passed so closely together. But before that, they were together constantly. I started the painting laying down the drawing board on a flat surface and started to block out some of the larger areas with pan pastel. This is Buff UART 500. And I'm using the cooler tones to define the overall negative space around the figures. Laying in some shadows then. Here's a little bit of warmth to define the face and the hair. Working with the larger eight Shapes first is always, always important. I'm not sure if you can see here the face of the woman on the right and the face of the cat on the left. That red spot seemed to have been a little leftover pastel on my sponge. Now that the mid-tones have been laid in, I can start laying in some of the negative space of the darker areas. When I'm doing this, I'm thinking more of sculpting around the objects, defining the edges with negative space. At each step of the process, you want to be sure that every shape is an interesting shape. Step back, think abstractly, turn it upside down, turn it on its side. Double check to make sure that you're not falling into some unthinking pattern or approach. One reason I do like the pan pastels is that you can lay down large areas very quickly with very little pastel into the tooth of the paper. It allows tooth to stand up and still accept a lot more pastel as you go along. I'm spraying with isopropyl alcohol to help set some of those darker colors into the paper, deeper into the tooth, so that they won't be lifted up as I bring other layers over the top. I can also use a watercolor brush. This one's clean, 
to hold the lighter areas down. It again just washes in the pigment deeply into the tooth and helps set it there so when you come over the surface with other pastels, they won't be lifted up and you'll have those beautiful subtle colors from behind shining through the vacant areas between the particles of pastel as you finish on the surface. I also use this time to redefine and work more precisely in some of the shapes that I'm working. Again, I think a lot sculpturally as I'm working. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. It's because that's part of my background. Initially, I wanted to be a sculptor. But through the process of life, that doesn't always happen, what we think. And I've ended up being a painter. But I still think in that three-dimensionality as I'm putting an image on the paper. I like the brush strokes that comes out of my oil and watercolor background. It adds some more direction and interest to the background. Again, in large strokes, I'm not working any details at this point, nothing fine. Quick little spritz, notice how you get a resist. The alcohol will push some of the pigments away when you put it on in that direction. And that adds a neat texture to the painting. Moving the painting to the easel, I am starting to define some of the highlighted areas where the warmth of the light will hit the face and the hands, soften those background hues that are a little too intense, and also, meanwhile, defining the edge of the profile. The marks I'm making here, I have recently brought back into my repertoire. For a number of years, I've been using a lot of the flat side of a pastel stick, but I remembered back when I was first doing pastel, how I would get up on the tip and add energetic lines to create a texture. I'm trying to combine all of the approaches more and more and use each where it works the best. So there's always variety of textures in the painting. It creates greater interest and helps the eye to dance around the picture plane. When making certain marks, always make sure they follow the form of the object that you're painting. Everything works to the complete painting. Notwithstanding that sometimes you want to do something contradictory, again, to add something else of interest that is so subtle and almost subconscious.
trying to define a little more. The hands seem a little small for the composition. Always keep it in relationship to the size of the face and the head. Plus, in this painting, the connection between the woman and the cat is in the hand, so the hand is important. Often, if you exaggerate it just slightly in size, it'll maintain that sense of importance. The cat is white, so I wanted to bring in some blue undertones while defining the shadow and shape of the cat's face. Even though I'm using linear marks, I follow the form, I sculpt in the shape, and I think each little section. Here I'm using a paper stump to help sculpt out the shape of the face. A paper stump can kind of blend. It can carry over colors that are already on it to add some subtle grays. And it can almost erase at times. So that's a great tool to use. Just think about how to use it and what you can do with it. I'm stepping back constantly, but every now and then it's good to take a photo of where you are because the colors are more accurate than in the video. And I had to reconsider the colors I was using. What did I want? I wanted mom's favorite colors, rose and blue. So I found an image on Pinterest and then I chose my colors according to that and tested them out on a piece of sanded paper on the edge of my easel. I didn't get back to the painting till the next day and look what had happened. The tape had let go. I don't use a really strong tape because I don't want it to affect the surface of the paper much. I want it to come off easily, but I needed to have applied it with a little firmer press. Nicely though, this works back in and it holds it again. I like the black tape because it's not distracting from the painting. I do often have a bit of white something off to the edge so that my camera lens can find the white balance. That's my color scheme I was looking at. Now to get to work and apply it better. in this bit of fuchsia to help direct the viewer's eye to the points of importance and interest. They'll be more subtle later, but at this point it helps to draw the eye. I'm adding those near complementary colors of the blues and the pinks in the background to soften it and push it back. I don't want it to have the texture like the foreground. I soften and then I use the alcohol to blend the colors together. In some areas they'll sit on top of each other and with the liquid in other areas it will combine them. Plus it adds another interesting layer of texture. I'm more carefully defining the planes of the, sh of the face and the hands. Your middle tones, your shaded areas, and your highlights. Back and forth. 
Again, I think like a sculptor so often, adding and subtracting elements. I try to allow my intuition to play across the surface of the painting. Adding in that contradictory color, I think I had better check this overall balance, try to forget the figure, and turn the painting upside down to give myself a new objective viewpoint. Step back, think, 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 is this working tonal-wise? Is it working color-wise? Is the composition and the design still working well? This is a time to step back and reconsider. I could see I didn't have enough blues to pull everything together. Whoops, and the paper's a little wet, so it takes the pastel differently than when it's dry. Back to the normal view, step back, always step back and look at it. I wanted some of that soft washed in background, not just in that far corner, but between. So I had to put this upside down at an angle to allow the drips to go in the direction that I wanted them. I didn't want the alcohol to go over the faces of the figures. This just helps me tie the background together a little better in keeping with itself and apart from the foreground figures. Besides sculpting, I love to use my drawing experience. And I often draw with fine charcoal. To me, it suits the pastel medium very well. It works in partnership with it. It is light, but it also is a little bit deep. I mean, it's light not in, in hue or value. It's light in its application. It's not a dark, dark, and it blends in well, and it helps to find details without creating too much contrast and too much detail, basically. I like the way it works with the pastel. Now to bring in a few mid-tone highlights, finding where the light is hitting, but not exaggerating it yet. The lightest lights I will retain until the end of the painting, but I always have them in my mind that this is to come. What's next? This is to come. Even though I'm at this point in the painting, the process of finishing it is always in the back of my mind. in and out, back and forth. This might work, this might not work. 
a little blend with the fingers. Soften some of the lines and leave some of the others. As I'm heading into the final applications of this painting, I have to start thinking in how do I want it finished? What do I want it to say on the surface? I have a lot of lower layers, textures, but now to define the energy, the feeling of the marks and what they bring to the painting. During the series that I've done on my mom, I tend to be doing a lot of disjointed energetic lines. And this somehow gets that feeling of the unraveling of a life as it nears its end, the fraying of the details of life, that transition between here and there. When I add in the glasses, I'm trying to keep it simple and light. As you saw, I just used the very edge of my long vine charcoal to get in a couple of straight lines. I don't think eyewear. I think highlights and midtones. Keeping it simple makes it work better. As one of my favorite artists, Brian Rutenberg says, the eye, not told what to see, sees more. 
so it's important to leave many details hinted at, basically unfinished. Adding a little bit of refracted light where it passes through the lens and onto the skin. Just those highlights here and there. They may seem random, but they add to the painting. to adjust a very few things in the painting, add a few finishing details, but also keep it in that semi-finished, unfinished state that helps to convey the feeling of transition. Considering the other paintings in this series, you'll see that there's one where this cat is sitting and looking at an empty chair. After my mother passed, the princess did that for about a week. She stopped eating and drinking, and within days had followed my mom. I think I'll title this, We Go Together, because they always went together in life and they left together in death. I have found that recently these paintings that are raw emotion for me are cathartic. They've helped me through a very difficult transition in my life. In this series, I have an expression and knowledge that my mother, my first teacher and mentor, remains with me always.